There's nothing we can do. Stop it, Adelaide. If you're going to whimper, do it in your room. Really, Edna, must you be so sharp to your own sister? Jared, did you insist on a copy of the will? It wasn't necessary. The learned judge offered me a copy before I had a chance to ask. He knew what was in my mind. Oh, the shame of it. Cut off without a penny. Forsaken. Her own kin, or practically her own flesh and blood. Elizabeth was our cousin, my dear, once removed. Nevertheless, I think it was horrid of her to treat us so. How can we ever hold up our heads again? No, no, at least we have a roof over our heads, Adelaide, and time to think things out. There never was a problem that wouldn't yield to time and careful thought. Oh, Sarah, do you think so? Do you really? I know so, my dear. Oh, I'm so glad, Jared. kind of late. Uh, are you going far now? I'm going to see Mr. George. Well, uh, that's almost to the end of the line. I know, but I must pay you. <laughs> no, 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 this is my treat. Now you sit down. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. <sure. laughs> this way in about five minutes, Miss Priscilla. I'll be waiting for you. Thank you.
Our little friend Priscilla is obviously on urgent business. But in a cemetery, you say? Ah, my friends, this is no ordinary child, as you will see. Oh, no, indeed. You see, she has a very special friend and protector resting here. Oh, yes, to the rest of the world, her friend is properly deceased and quite, quite cold. But since Priscilla is not aware of adult concepts such as life and death, she simply knows that Mr. George has only changed his address. That's the title of our story, Mr. George. And it concerns the fearful effect his untimely demise has on our leading players. And they are... Virginia Gregg, Lillian Bronson, and Howard Freeman. And most importantly, Priscilla herself, as played by Miss Gina Gillespie and Mr. George. I warn you, hold tight to your own concepts of life and death, because before the hour has ended, Priscilla and her special guardian may change them. a lawyer. The best that money can buy. Yes. Yes, that's the very thing to do. Don't you agree, Jared? Even if we had the money and we haven't, it would be a waste. The will can't be broken. It must be. You forget, Edna, that George Craig was an excellent lawyer. Elizabeth's lawyer. That's not all he was to Elizabeth. No, that's not all. It was disgraceful the way those two carried on and her a widow with a child to raise. No wonder that Priscilla's so secretive. The things that child must have been exposed to. Don't let your imagination run away with you, Adelaide. As far as anyone knows, George and Elizabeth were simply good friends. A likely fiction. Fiction or fact, it doesn't change things one jot. When Elizabeth died, she left her entire estate in trust to Priscilla with George Craig, the child's legal guardian. Now, with George gone, the trust will be administered by Judge Lambeau, a suspicious-minded man to whom I took an instant distrust. Oh, dear. What's to become of us? We'll stay on here and look after Priscilla. Even Judge Lambeau had to agree that it was more fitting for the child to be raised by her cousins than by some hired governess. What do we know about raising children? Yes. What do we know about raising children? Except their noses are always needed blowing and their hands are always grubby. Nevertheless, we're staying. Did you hear that, will you? Adelaide. Stop that stupid thing. Oh, don't you call my little William stupid. He's my own dear little pet. It isn't real, Adelaide. It's a toy. Can't you get that into your head? Oh, look what she did. She stopped him right in the middle of his song. Oh, you're cruel, Edna. You're mean and cruel. By the way, Edna, as I was leaving, the judge handed me this bank draft. Every month there'll be another. You mean to say we're expected to run this household and feed and clothe ourselves on this? Now, now, Edna, if we're going to work this thing out, we'll have to be on the scene here, in control, so to speak. You fool. You'd be perfectly content to live her on charity until the child comes of age and turns us out penniless. Adelaide, dear, I'm going upstairs to my room. Please call me for supper. Yes, Jared. Jared, don't think that this is going to buy me off. I've got just as much right to that money as Elizabeth's child. So do I. Just because great-uncle Albert took a liking to Elizabeth instead of to us. I've had 
old man wasn't even in his right mind when he cut us off. Only Priscilla stands between us and half a million. Edna. Don't listen to me, you pious hypocrite. I'm not afraid to say what you're thinking. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with my share of the money. I'm going to travel. I'm going to buy some wonderful new clothes. I'm going to meet new people. Live. Isn't it a little late for that, Edna? I don't think you're so old, Edna. I should have gone to see Judge Lambo myself. I wish you had. All this talk about who would inherit if anything happened to her is positively morbid. Don't deny the thought hasn't crossed your mind. Well, if you must know, the question did occupy my thoughts. Frankly, I see no reason why we shouldn't inherit. There aren't any other relatives. And in the absence of anything to the contrary in the will. That's what I thought. Well, you can forget it. She's as healthy as a cow. But things could happen. You give me the creeps, Edna. Just the same if something did happen to her. Just think, Jared. A half a million dollars. You've never really had an opportunity to become anything. Your whole life has been one little failure after another. Imagine what you could do with your share. Now, listen to me, Edna. That's enough of that kind of talk. It's dangerous and unwholesome. You're never to speak like that again, especially around Adelaide. You know how impressionable Adelaide is. She never was exceptionally bright. The way she carries on with that toy bird. There's no telling what she might do if anybody put a wrong idea in her head. My dear. Are you suggesting that I might influence Adelaide? I'm not suggesting anything. Now, you'd better go to your room, Edna. Good night.
gone. Here comes our Edna. It's all right, Celine. Why did she go, Celine? She didn't even say goodbye. Mr. George went away all of a sudden. And now Miss Noonan. Celine? Do you suppose she went to cook for Mr. George? He always liked her dumplings and the way she made strawberry jam. But why didn't they say goodbye? And it's such a nice morning, too. I was going to ask her if we could have breakfast out here. Did you sleep well, Celine? I did, and I had a dream, a nice dream. Mr. George came back, and do you know what he said? He said, close your eyes, Priscilla. Close your eyes, dear, and sleep. It was just like when he lived here. Celine, why did Mr. George go away? Do you think he'll ever come back? I'm back, Priscilla. I'm back, dear. Celine, you're teasing me. It's not Celine, dear. It's me, Mr. George. I'm right here. Mr. George? Is it? Is it really you? Yes, Priscilla. But where are you, Mr. George? Priscilla, you're not to be afraid. No matter what happens, you're not to be afraid. Do you understand? Oh. Please come out, please. I know. You're hiding in the bushes. But I'll find you. You couldn't be in the playhouse, but you could be in the treehouse. But I just can't find you. I know you're in the playhouse. Edna, look what that child is doing. Mr. George, where, where are you? You couldn't be on the roof. Or are you in that tree? I know you're in the tree house. I think she's gone a little strange in the head. I heard her from my window upstairs. She was talking to someone. All children have imaginary playmates. I remember you had dozens. Sometimes I suspect you haven't given them all up. Oh, Edna, what a horrid thing to say. Horrid! <laughs> Don't you dare start bellowing, do you hear me? I'll tell Jared and he'll speak to you. You do that. Meanwhile, set the table. We have a servant to do those things. Mrs. Noonan isn't with us any longer. Edna, what's that you said about Mrs. Noonan? I discharged her. When? Last night. After we had our little talk. Oh. Who's going to feed us? I will, for the time being, at least. Adelaide, go call the child in for breakfast. Go on! Now explain yourself. I simply didn't want any outsiders in the house. Until it's finished. Until what's finished? I've been giving it some thought, Jared. It's going to have to be an accident of some kind. Or at least appear like one. That's quite enough. I was just reading somewhere the other day about an accident that took the lives of two children. I won't listen to another word. When breakfast is ready, call me. Run along and wash your hands, Priscilla, then take your place at table. Yes. Imaginary playmates, is it? She says George is out there somewhere hiding from her, and she says he talked to her. It's the height of imagination. She's living in a fantasy. Living in a fantasy? 
Why didn't I tell you she was strange? We should have her put away. We should tell that horrid judge that she's not right and we should demand the money. Set the table, please, Adelaide. Oh, you never listen to anything I say, Aunt Joan Sheriff. <laughs> Priscilla? Celine? Who else, dear? Tell your Uncle Jared who else, dear. Make her tell you, Jared. You want Adelaide to ask you a question, Priscilla? You told me before, dear. Mr. George. Indeed. And what did he say? Answer me. See here, young miss, I will not tolerate dumb insolence. Leave the child alone, Jared. What difference does it make what she imagines? I didn't imagine it. It was Mr. George. Last night I thought I dreamed it. But he did come. He's here somewhere. Because I asked him to come back. You see, Edna, maybe you'll listen to me after this. Be quiet, Adelaide. Priscilla, you may go to your room and stay there. When you are ready to respect the truth, you may come down and apologize. that prove there's something wrong with her? Adelaide, dear, if they put her away, we'd have to find some place else to live. The money would be held for her until she's 90 if she lived that long. Oh, dear, that would never do. Then we'll drop that idea. Do you understand? Yes, Edna. Whatever must be done, must be done quickly. I was saying to Jared that I read something in the newspaper the other day. If you'll excuse me, I have some important letters to write in the drawing room. Yes, Jared, you run along. Adelaide and I will take care of things. You were saying you read something, Edna? About two children who were playing in an attic. They climbed in an old trunk. The lid came down, and they suffocated. Oh, how dreadful. We must be very careful that Priscilla doesn't play in the attic. A thing like that should happen to her. Oh, yes, if anything like that should happen to her. We'd inherit, wouldn't we? That's right, dear. We'd inherit all her money. Half a million dollars. Yes, we'd inherit. <laughs> Have you seen Mr. George again, dear? I wonder where he can be. Still hiding, I suppose. Yes, that must be it. I wonder. No, I don't think he'd be hiding there, dear. Where? In the attic. In the attic? Yes. Well, there are all sorts of places to hide up there. I wonder if we dare go up and look. Oh, could we? Well, well maybe if, 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 if we're very, very quiet. We wouldn't want Uncle Jared to hear us, would we? So, we won't make a sound, will we? That door squeaks. George, Mr. George, he'll hear you and run away. 
Let's just look for him quietly, shall we? Yes. Mr. George. Mr. George. Mr. George. Shh. Not a peep out of you either, will you? Priscilla. Mr. George. She's gone. I'll miss her. You'll miss her. You'll miss someone to agree with your pious platitudes. <laughs> You're a funny Aunt Laura. Hello. I'm Laura Craig. George's sister. I uh, hope you'll forgive my coming unannounced. I uh, just got back from abroad today and I read about your loss. Please accept my sympathy. Thank you. The newspaper didn't say how it happened. It was an accident. Oh. I'm sorry I couldn't get to the service. Why should you be, Miss Craig? You didn't know my sister. Well, that's quite true, but I almost feel as though I did. You see, George wrote me all about you. When he was ill and, and you came to take care of Priscilla. Indeed. Priscilla and I had a nice visit while I was waiting, didn't we, dear? I just can't get over how she's grown since I last saw her. Well, I... I won't intrude any longer. Goodbye, dear. I'll walk you to the gate, Laura. Priscilla, it's time for your nap. Go upstairs. Run along, dear. We'll have a nice long walk in the park next time I come. You will come back, won't you, Aunt Laura? Why, of course I will, dear. Priscilla, hurry. I do so hope that... I'll escort you to the door, Miss Craig. Thank you. 
Good day, Miss Luckett. Didn't you hear me call? Too busy chattering? Who are you talking to, Priscilla? The cat's got your tongue again, eh? Very well, young lady. Downstairs with you. Ed, uh, have you seen my collar buttons? I can't find them. Oh, stop sputtering. There are collar buttons in George's dresser. rocking all by itself. Oh, nonsense. You must have bumped it. No, no. I was standing right there. I couldn't have. Edna, do you suppose the child is right? Do you suppose he is in the house? What are you talking about? George. George Craig. Oh, really, Jared? You make me sick. Oh, it's about time you face some facts. What happened to Adelaide wasn't an accident. You know that. The way she went. Simply ghastly. You're behaving like a frightened schoolboy, and I'll hear no more of it. Interesting. There's a half a million dollars out there, Jared. It could be yours and mine. Yours and mine. That swing has a heavy seat. If it should strike her down. No. No more, Edna. That's enough. Do you hear? Who's to say it wasn't an accident? Half a million dollars. No, Priscilla. Priscilla, no, dear, no. No, Priscilla, no. No, dear, no. No, you, you, you mustn't swing so high. Why? Why? You might hurt yourself. No. I'll show you how high you may safely go. Oh, I can go higher than this. No, no, dear, that's, that's too high, too high. But it's no fun if I can't go high. I told you, it isn't safe. You might hurt yourself. You might fall. But I won't fall. Now, Priscilla, don't contradict your elders. It's very impolite. Priscilla, here, Priscilla. George? Now, that's enough, dear. That's enough. <laughs> My arms are getting tired. Oh, see the pretty red bird over there. Where, Uncle Jared? Where? Over there! Run into the playhouse, quick. Priscilla! Quick, Priscilla. Priscilla! Priscilla, come back here. Come back this instant, do you hear me?
imaginary friend again. I thought I told you to stop that nonsense. You're a disobedient little girl, Priscilla. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry. I'm sorry what? I'm sorry, Aunt Edna. It's better. Go wash your hands and face and get ready for supper. Did the swing hit Uncle Jared when he wasn't looking? Or did he slip and fall in its path while he was pushing you? Priscilla, tell me how it happened. I don't know. Why are you so stubborn? I don't know how it happened. You were there. Don't lie to me, young lady. I was in the playhouse. Mr. George told me to go into the playhouse. You saw him? No. If you didn't see him, how do you know it was George? I know. How? Answer me. I suppose it was George you were playing hide and seek with in the parlor. Priscilla, you're a wicked child. Go to your room. You will stay there until I've decided your punishment. Good evening, Miss Leggett. I'm sorry to intrude at a time like this, but it's very urgent. I must speak to you. May I come in? Is there somewhere we can speak privately? Now, Miss Craig, what is it that couldn't wait until a decent time? You're absolutely right to be incensed, Miss Leckett. And I really am very sorry about your brother. But you intrude anyway. I had to. You see, I wanted to see you myself before you received the letter. Letter? What letter? From Judge Lambeau. He's given me custody of Priscilla. I, I know how you must feel. But you see, I love the child, too. I was very close to her mother, and of course you know that George and Elizabeth were going to be married. Well, what I'm trying to say is that I feel about Priscilla as if what she... What you're trying to say is that you ran to Judge Lambo and spread malicious lies about me. That's not true. You don't fool me for a moment. I guessed what your scheme was the first time you came snooping around here. Well, let me tell you, you're not going to take that child without a fight. Judge Lambo hasn't heard from me yet. He's already made his decision. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. Just like that. Huh? I'm to be discarded without a penny. No. Since your brother is gone and you seem to be without means, I... Well, I've asked Judge Lambo to continue the monthly payments to you. No, not charity, an acknowledgement of your help. I know what you're after. And it's not Priscilla. Miss Leckett, I have means of my own. Substantial means. And if I did have designs on Priscilla's money, I couldn't touch it. Judge Lambo would see to that. While she lives. 
If anything should happen to Priscilla, which God forbid, you are still her only relative, her only legal heir. However, she's leaving here, whether you like it or not. Why? Give me one good reason why. Because she's unhappy. Did she tell you that? No. Priscilla has never said a word against any of you. Then why? Because a happy child doesn't cling to fantasies. So that's it. Her Mr. George, her imaginary guardian, she told you all about him. Yes. And you told the judge. I had to, for the child's sake. When? Would 10 o'clock tomorrow morning be convenient for you? I'll see that she's ready. Good night, Miss Leggett. Stairs, Priscilla, quietly. But, Mr. George, that's Laura. She's come to get me. Wait for her in the tea house. Do you hear me? Yes, Mr. George. Priscilla, do you want to get left behind? Don't worry, dear. Laura won't leave without you. Yes, Mr. George. <laughs> George told me to wait in the playhouse. He did, dear? Yes, but I thought I'd miss you. Oh, you couldn't possibly miss me. But we'll miss our streetcar if we don't hurry. I'll race you. All right. Well, hello, Miss Priscilla. Hello, Mr. Conductor. Are you going far now? 
I'm going to Amanda Park with Miss Laura. Well, that's clear over on the other side of the city. Now, isn't that nice? I know. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness, I've forgotten. There's another one. Priscilla. Mr. George, hurry, or you'll get left behind. Goodbye, dear. Why? No, Priscilla. Laura will take care of you now. Goodbye. I understand. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Mr. George. Goodbye. 